Welcome to Friday the 18th. Maybe I messed up. I forgot Thursday, St. Patrick's Day. I believe that Friday is the 18th. I think today's the 18th. It doesn't matter. Welcome to Friday, this fifth of five series of videos of a church at home about Lenten disciplines. And today I'd like to talk to you about reading and meditating on the Word of God. It's kind of like prayer. When I was talking back on Tuesday, I think it was about prayer, about prayer being this, this being in proximity with God, an ongoing conversation with God. Well, reading and meditating on the Word of God is really sinking ourselves into paying attention to the way that God has spoken to us and spoken to the world through the centuries as it is presented in Scripture, in the Bible. There's a great line I love to use. I use it all the time around here that says, if I can get this right, it says, all things necessary for salvation can be found in Scripture, but not all things in Scripture are necessary for salvation. So as you start to read the Bible, as you let's see, pull up my BAS to see the actual wording of it here, by reading and meditating on the Word of God, as you read and meditate on the Word of God, keep in mind that every single word you read is not so crucial that your salvation depends upon it. But if you're concerned about your salvation and want to know more about it and what's required of you or what it means, everything you need to know about it can be found in Scripture. Now, that doesn't mean that, every, like I said, that you could just pick it up and start reading from the beginning and you'll figure it out. If you're reading Scripture like that, you really, like if you're reading Scripture, you really need to study it, to take notes, to talk to other people, to read commentaries, to, to dig in and find out those things that you don't know. Because scripture is filled with, with mystery. It's written in Hebrew and in Greek. And it's been translated. And different people, different experts have had disagreements about what does this word really mean and is it translated this way. We have, we have Bibles that are interpretations versus translations. A translation means that the person or the editors of that Bible have gone to the original language and have translated it from the Hebrew or Greek and put it into English in the best way that both makes sense to us but is honoring the original language that it was presented. Hence, some things in Scripture are jarring. Some things are not easy to read because it's like, wait a minute, we hear about Jesus being so meek and mild, and then there's other times when he's really kind of, oh, well, yeah, because the, they're not trying to make us feel good in their, inter, in their translation of the Bible. They're trying to give us what was really written in the Bible, and then we can interpret that. We can try to understand it. We can work with it, pray with it. There are also then interpretations of the Bible where people have sat down and said, okay, how can I reword this so that people of today would understand? So when I was growing up in the 70s, um, when I was a little girl, my mom had a copy of Reach Out, which I think was the Old Testament, and The Way. So Reach Out was black, and it had the words, letters Reach Out and, and people's faces, like look like teenagers from the 70s, in the letters. And The Way was a green, sometimes with a blue, um, covered Bible, same idea, I think, had the way. And it was all that Old Testament, New Testament, and Psalms. Old Testament includes Psalms, so I don't know why I said that. But it had everything in it. Um, but it was kind of like the Good News Bible. It was not a translation. It was an interpretation. It was written in such a way that people would feel comfortable and they would understand the analogies. They would understand what it was saying. Um, these days, we have Eugene Peterson, who has since died, I believe, wrote um, this incredible, I love using this one, it's called The Message. And his was, again, an interpretation in which he's like a story. He tells the biblical story in language that the average everyday person can engage with, both understand and dive into. Absolutely incredible. So we are called to read and meditate on the Bible. The Word of God. The Word of God. So reading it is just that. We read it. We pick it up in Lent ideally ideally every day of the year. But in Lent in particular, we, we set aside time to specifically take time 
to pick up our Bible and spend some time reading it. Well, I can read a book and walk away and not remember anything I've read. You know, it's like when you ever look in the mirror and walk away and think, did I brush my hair? I can't remember what I look like. Sometimes, you know, you pick up the Bible and you start reading and that happens. And sometimes it's okay. But in Lent in particular, I think we need to be focused and really pay attention to our reading of the Bible. Whether it's using something like our daily bread or a day-by-day -day resource that gives us some passages to read um, specifically, or just starting to read it every day, or using the lectionary in the Book of Alternative Services, there's a whole um, how to read the Bible, like what day of the week is it, what week of the year is it, and it gives you some scripture to read, and it follows along then every week. So you're reading pretty much the story in tandem. It's half, like you're reading through the Gospels and the Old and New Testament of Psalms. So reading, reading the Bible, specifically taking time to read the Bible intentionally is a huge thing to do. And then meditating on it. So, I mean, you say meditating, you say, oh, oh, that's what we're talking about. Meditate. I think of meditation, I think of, of, of settling myself and breathing deeply and inviting God in and then thinking and praying. So, for instance, the 23rd Psalm. You might want to read the 23rd Psalm and then take time to meditate on it. Read one sentence and close your eyes and think about what does this mean? What was David saying? What was happening in David's life? You might want to get a study Bible or a commentary that can give you the context. What was happening in King David's life when he wrote that? He's writing as a shepherd. What enemies was he worried about that, you know, he, he makes me to lie down in green pastures, the still waters, he anoints my head, my cup is running over, he prepares a feast for me, a table for me in the presence of my enemies. What does that mean? You can go there with that. You can sit down and take it apart and, and read one line at a time and think, what does that mean in my life? What could God be speaking to me? I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. In your life, I imagine there have been times when you have looked around you and you have felt so much despair that you must have felt like you were walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Reading through the scripture, line by line, gently and, and soothingly and peacefully and intentionally paying attention to what you're reading can bring you new insights, can give you an understanding of things that are happening in your life. They can help you to recognize how God is speaking to you. I'm using the 23rd Psalm as an example because as I said a week or two ago about praying scripture for someone, um, I referred to praying for, and I, used the, I changed the name of the person I was praying for, and called her Kendra. But I have found when I pray that prayer every day for that person, um, I'm finding that it's starting to speak to me as well. So that I'm not only saying her name, but I'm saying my own name. That as I walk, as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. And just saying it quietly is helping me to be aware of those places in my life where I have tried to, to jump ahead and go ahead of God and do it on my own and found myself definitely smack dab right in the front of an enemy, whether that would be a bear or a wolf for a shepherd or whatever that might be, I find myself putting myself in danger, putting myself in places of anxiety because I'm not paying attention to God. So slowing down with the Lord's or the, with the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, is, tell, is, is helping me this Lent to be present and to not run ahead, but to be diligent and intentional about where I move and how I think and how I pray. So being able to meditate on the word, it could indeed be taking a sentence, you know, the Lord is my shepherd and chanting that as we meditate. Or it could be simply taking the scripture one verse at a time, one passage at a time and really taking time to think, maybe journal, right? Asking questions, who is being spoken to? What is being said? Where are they? What era is this? What year was this written? Who, if you're talking about Paul, writing to the Romans, what was happening that this is what Paul was saying. Taking time to dig deep, to, to really search out meaning 
whether it's in the text or for yourself. I think that's what we do in Lent when we, when we read and meditate on the Word of God. We allow ourselves to steep ourselves in that Holy Scripture, and then we get to know God in new ways and know ourselves as well. So that is a week of sort of instruction on how to, how to, how to go forward in the season of Lent. Things that we can, we can do to make this season of Lent that much more powerful for us, but also maybe change our lives that when we, when we come out of Lent and east, into the Easter season, into Easter tide, we might carry forward with us the learnings we have gleaned and take those things with us that we might celebrate the very wonderful gift that God has given us through Lent, through Holy Week, the Paschal Triduum, and through Easter, and carrying on into our lives. So have a great weekend. Have a good weekend. Um, if you're in Edgerton on Sunday night, um, come on out to the Agricultural Hall. We're having a Ukrainian dinner um, and support all the proceeds. will go. The profits will go to support Ukrainian aid, and we're going to eat pierogies and garlic sausage and lazy cabbage rolls and good desserts. Um, so come on out and join us and and celebrate celebrate the life that we have. And pray for those who maybe are really, really scared about their own lives. God bless you. See you Sunday for our mini church or Monday for church at home with Rachel. God bless.